Today is April 21st. The Yankees win another series, taking the bread games versus the Rays. But there's a lot to discuss, so let's talk Yanks. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, which is brought to you by SeatGeek. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake. Producer BBD here as well. And we're talking Yankees baseball. They take two out of three from the Rays, which is great news because they continue to win series. They haven't lost a series at home yet. Their record now is 15 and seven and Mm. something like that. Maybe, maybe not. And... They're they're winning. It's bad news because it it probably quells a lot of the conversations I would like to have with you, Jake, or makes it us come off as negative Nellies. How are you, James Davis uh, Nelly? Jeff Nelson in the booth. Uh, a positive, usually a positive Nelly. Uh, depends the topic. He uh, he got he got me and BBD with an audible laugh. Uh, and Michael K goes, I, I wonder how many fans know that Yandy Diaz won the batting tie last year. And Jeff Nelson goes, goes None. nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Damn. All right, Jeff. You um, know what? Like, I knew that. But if you were to ask me I, who won the batting tie last year in the AL, I wouldn't have whipped it out. Clip that. Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, – yeah, there's two different things going on. Like, this was – the Yankees have a great record. They're, they're playing uh, – they're playing an okay brand of baseball. Like I, I think there's there's two sides of the coin. We've got, you know, we're what now fifteen and seven. Judge has looked bad. Glaber has looked bad. Um, you know, Volpe since he's moved up to leadoff, he hasn't been good. Like we've we've seen this team go through a couple anemic offensive spurts, and the fact they keep winning games, like that's a sign of a really good ball club. Uh, but yeah, I think there's. You know, the the bullpen questions we've been asking. And, yeah, I guess if you're listening to Talking Yanks, just know when <laughs> I feel like you, me, BBD, Joe's, uh, formerly Dan Canobio, big fight this weekend, but he's mm. I haven't seen him. I don't know. Um, but, like, Yankee fans, I think a lot of Yankee fans saw how good this team was the first weekend. And it's like, oh, right, that's what a good baseball team is, that we're now looking at, like, how do we make this a great team? How do we make this uh, an even better team? So when we're talking about the bullpen or some of the other things we're seeing, like know that we have a baseline of like, this is a good team. We like this team, but we're yeah, trying. No, it's a lot better than it, last. Trying to get it better. Yeah, I explained that to Boone too last week. But also, it's a little bit like, okay, this is a this is a conversation uh, between Yankee fans about the Yankees for Yankees fans. If you are a Guardians fan listening to this, and you're gonna try to tell me. The Yankees stink. I'm going to tell you your team stinks Mm. and this team's way better. That goes for the Rays too. They're a sloppy mess and I don't know half their players. Not that they want me to know them. They're underpaid and they should pay them more. Keep bragging about having the same record as the Yankees, but for way less money. Okay. Cheapskates pay your players. Then if they're so good, you idiots going to go into another strike and miss out on baseball for half a year because of you there's grievances. So that's what I would say to Rays fans. If they were to come at us, this is kind of like, but within our huddle, hey, there's some major issues that we need addressed pretty pretty before the playoffs. Right. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to some of them. I mean, you know, infield defense, catcher throws, bullpen, uh, some Relief parts of the pitching. lineup. Those are the three. Those are the three. So we'll uh we'll get through that. We'll get through some of that in the series. But ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. It's Jimmy's groundskeeping. Oh, baby. <laughs> Groundskeeping from the top of my memory because I don't care about half of it. Canely, don't know, don't care. Still the same thing, I think. Uh, DJ LeMayhew, doctor told him, you can't play on this foot. What are you talking about, DJ? Yeah. And DJ said, no, nah, I think I'm going to do some minor league games in like three days. Doctor was like, highly don't recommend that. You don't 
haven't gotten better yet. And then that's the last update I heard. So there seems like we're in a fight between DJ and his doctor. That's his update. Oswaldo, uh, Oswald Peraza got in the mix today. And I was like, ha ha, haven't had you on the grounds keeping it all. Cause what's mm -hmm. your return? We could actually use him now. The bench stinks. Mm -hmm. So he is quote unquote deep into his throwing program. End quote. That was the update that we got today about Oswald Peraza. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, Birdie, the pitcher, his <laughs> hip is hurt. So he went on to the IL uh, and they replaced him with... Which Cody is it? Cody Morris from the Guardians. The other Cody's. Now both Cody's have made the 26-man roster. They, they, uh, they DFA'd Kevin Smith. And he cleared waivers, so they just sent him to AAA. And they got our dude Taylor Trammell to come in. He made an appearance in the outfield, I believe, mm -hmm. um, in game number two. And I believe that's all I have for the drown grounds keeping. A little, little additional notes on the injury front from some guys. I know uh, DJ allegedly is beginning a rehab assignment Tuesday now. It was originally Friday. Ill-advised. Uh, Peraza, like you said, deep into the throwing program. But the Yankees said he's weeks away from minor league games. That's um, when it says deep into the throwing program. That means he's not even. Why are you asking about it? I've never that heard that said saying, for not a pitcher. Stop before. thinking. Stop thinking about it. That was what the Yankees said. Lou Trevino in two weeks yeah. will throw a live BP. Canely's going to have a bullpen session then try live BP again. But another uh, one. Yeah, but every time he's gotten to that step in the course of the rehab from this injury, uh, they've shut it down right after. And Scott Afros, this is on the Yankees graphic during the game. Minor hiccups uh, in his rehab, and that, that's all they've that's all they've said really. He's behind Trevino. I think that's what he had a case of. Yes. Yep. Jinx. He go. So that's the groundskeeping. I nailed it. You did really well. That was really good. Yeah. You did really well. Not a love to not a love to add there. Mm. Mm. Not a love to add. I mean, I had a trade in the mix. He had a trade in the mix, everyone. Uh, I mean, if you want to do analysis on the groundskeeping, right. the Yankees have no bench. I mean, they have Jemai Jones and uh, Grisham and Taylor Trammell, who are the same guy, and then the catcher situation. Like, they have... They have no backup third baseman, first baseman, or shortstop on the bench. Correct. They'd be forced to actually do the Jemai Jones thing, which they claimed they're comfortable with in a pinch, but uh, as Waldo, it's pinch time. As Waldo can move around. As Waldo would be is your first and first you just, baseman. You have shortstop to move all the starters right around. Now. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean – Grisham, hey, outfield assist this series, but, you know, he's supposed to be a bench piece. But, yeah, Jemai Jones and then Taylor Trammell gets put in the game uh, and then he gets pinch hit for in the extra inning. So kind of tough. I had a thought about his okay. situation. My thought was, did they pick up Taylor Trammell and replace him with Kevin Smith because they think the formula of Trent Grisham starts, Stan pinch hits in the sixth or seventh, oh. and then they need another outfielder was more common than any scenario where he used Kevin Smith. And then the conclusion I came to from that thought was yes. So I think in the meantime, like this is just until DJ or Birdie comes back, they were like, what is going to happen more? Stan starts on the bench, we pinch hit him, and then we need an outfielder, or we need Kevin Smith. And they said in the next week or 10 days, the Trammell situation is way more likely. And that's what they did. Yeah, I think that, and Trammell has a history. He, he was a top 100 prospect. He's still 26. Number one that, pick. Yeah. You know, Yankees, Yankees like to. Tight. Yeah, that's, that's the Yankees formula. Talented person yes. we think we can tap into more. Absolutely. And friend. What's up? Nice guy. I was excited about it. Okay. That's the groundskeeping and analysis added to it. Bonus. Yeah. Game one, 
Jake will burn it. Brought to you by the New York Yankees MasterCard credit card. Yankees fans, you're already getting pinstripe news with us, and now you can earn pinstripe rewards with the New York Yankees MasterCard credit card. Everyone who opens up a Yankees credit card can earn two free tickets when you spend $100 on the Yankees credit card within 30 days of opening up an account, up to $100 value. Two free tickets for select regular season home games at the stadium. Plus, cardholders earn pinstripe rewards. So every purchase you make with your Yankees credit card, 5% back on purchases at the stadium and shops, 3% back on restaurants, bars, and ride share, 1% back on all other per- purchases. Cardholders have the exclusive opportunity to redeem pinstripe rewards for more Yankees tickets as well as memorabilia, VIP experiences at Yankee Stadium. So for more information and to start earning rewards today, Visit PinstripeRewards.com. That's PinstripeRewards.com. Restrictions apply. There's a link in the description. Wow, it's a pretty card. Pretty card. Game one. The Yanks march down from Toronto to protect their homes against Tyler Alexander the Great and the Tampa Bay Rays, while Lewis and Clark Schmidt would hope to lead the Yanks back to a series win. Zeros on the scoreboard until the sixth. Richie Rich Palacios gives the Rays a life raft. It's 1-0 solo homer, and it's the only blemish on Clark's day. 5.1, one earned run, seven Ks from Clark in the seventh. Oswaldo rocks one, literally hops over the Yandy man, yanks, tie it, and then S-O-T-O, Soto. Soto. S-O-T-O, Soto. Three-run homer. Oh, he's simply wonderful. Rays. Uh, They have a little Paredes off Hamilton, but the Yankees win Clark to Santana to Hammy to Clay. 5-3 final. One of the more bizarre games you will find to be played. I shared this. It was on Reddit by the constant gardener. He's been a constant on the Yankees subreddit for a long time. The, the Rays lineup out hit the Yankees 14 to five and the Rays pitching staff allowed zero earned runs. The Rays lost the game 55 to three. So Yanks stole a win there. I mean, Rays kind of gifted it to him because they also struggle with some of the things the Yankees struggle with um, being a good and su- fundamentally sound fielding and base running team. Yeah. I mean that uh, the huge play is the Oswaldo play. And I, it, you know, they were talking about it a lot on the broadcast. Like how does that get ruled an error uh, when we've seen so many errors around baseball? Mike, Michael K's mind was blown. Uh, it hit something and shot up over Yandy. He never really had a chance at it. So uh, that was a huge break for the Yanks. Uh, that kind of opened up the floodgates. And then, you know, Juan Soto at this point is the only guy in the Yankees lineup that if you're the opposing team, you can't have him up with runners on base. Uh, and for lack of a more Jack Curry articulate phrase, he pooped on that ball. Um, so... Uh, yeah, and, uh, for the Rays, you're right. I, I mean, the amount of hits they had. Uh, but only one player had extra base hits. It was Palacios. He had the home run and the double. So it was all dinks, dunks, and Rays. Um, and they can't take advantage enough. So, yeah, it was definitely a funky one. Um, and, yeah, if you're the Rays, when it was 5-1 to one in the 7th, they had, they had to all be looking around like, hey, what the heck, man? Happened quick. Happened real quick. Anything else from this game? I don't know if Clark gets talked about later. He could. Uh, yeah. I mean, a uh, you know, solid effort from Clark. Uh, Dennis Santana was first out of the bullpen. I like that for you. Uh, Ian, well, I'm in that ladder. Although today, we'll see. Yeah, the bullpen. They're all not great, man. I mean, uh, Hamilton yeah. is even fully not great or trusted anymore right now. Like, he's just been getting hit pretty decently, even with results the last five outings now, I think. So, um, I think I think what was interesting was this time it it appeared clear that it 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 was it was ugly. Like it was the Slombio yeah. wasn't doing anything. Uh, yeah. So and that was <laughs> you heard Kester uh, on today's game. Kind of doing a whoa, Ian Hamilton's not even up. What's going? Is there something wrong with him? 
And then I think he got an elbow in the booth. Like last time he just looked really bad, man. Yeah. And then Kaser yeah. followed up with that. So, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was alarming from Hammy. Yep. Judge but stole a base. It's working on it. Okay. No pinch hits, no nothing. Um, and decent lineup, although I still do not like their lineup against lefties. Yeah, Alexander mowed them down. He, uh, I don't know, sometimes us, us Yankee fans talk ourselves into some things that we probably need more data points, but when you see a, a lefty off-speed pitcher, I, I think our natural reaction is like, oh, this guy's going to get us for five innings today, uh, and he he did. I think before today they were four and four versus lefties and they're whatever, 12 and three or whatever it is against righties. And that's Kikuchi twice. So it's a small sample size. Well, yeah, it'd be eight games. The Rangers have them. But I think if you were to look at their numbers versus lefty starters, they'd be rather poor. Okay. So. You know, which is odd because it used to be we crushed lefties and not righties, which is a bummer because there's way more righties, you see. So it's a better side of the coin to be on. Yeah, I'll take that from everything we've said in previous years. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Nothing else from this game, I don't think. Milwaukee Brewers have only seen one left-handed starting pitcher this year. People are scared. How about that? Um... Marlins have seen 11. It's they're, a lot. We've seen nine. The Yanks have seen nine. They're one and in they're ten. they're all Marlins. Well, what are they versus righties? Four Three and seven. Ten? Four and seven? Yeah. Not good. Not good. Uh, Verdugo also stole a base, and um, they stole... What? Well, they stole five bases? In game one? No, two on the season. They stole three. And Caballero got picked off. Santana picked him off. We can't keep giving us free outs, these teams. I posted a montage of it. It's a lot of free outs. It's nice. Caballero begging to be picked off. Yeah. Notice me. Notice me. Talk about me. All right. Game two. Sure. Sure. There's a doozy. Burn, Jagger yeah, Burn. Blaze it, baby. 420 at the stadium, and it's the perfect day to honor John Sterling. Aaron Judge, bobblehead day. Oh, I've seen this before. This is a recipe for something historic. Nestor, he did his part. Seven shutout innings, 9K, zero walks. Unfortunately, on the other hand, Zach Led Zeflin would leave the Yanks dazed and confused. Six shutout innings of his own. Bunos Cantos and then Caballero gallops around the bases with a double. Scores on an RBI from the simulation himself, Ben Rortvet. Yanks lose and get shut out again. Ew, 2 nothing final. Ew, third shutout. They lose every time they're shut out. This was their first chance to win after being shut out yeah. through nine. They lost. Uh, they said it was the the last time they got shut out through extra innings was in 2001. Biebs, alive? Alive. So, it's a long time ago. And um, all the same, though, Jake, Nestor was great, so it didn't feel like a total dud of a game. And then also, I am nominating this for worst lineup of the year. Yeah, that was a that was a gut punch. I was getting my Saturday morning on, um, you know, a little little walk to the park, a little you know, get get every everything in order so I can watch the Yankees game. And I knew it was John Sterling Day, so I was getting excited for the pregame ceremonies. And I'm getting lost in it, man. We we've, we've got Bernie video board. We got Jeets on the video board. We got the whole Sterling family out there. How do you like that? Susan giving it hell. The Booney and Glaber carrying the biggest TV you've seen. Why not? Uh, vibes are high. And then I looked at the lineup and I said, oh, no. Oh, no. Because with Judge and Glaber slumping, 
And Volpe. Like, this wasn't a lineup. I, I yeah, hate Glaber to be... wasn't in it. They started, so Trent Grisham was right. in the six hole. Then Oswaldo Cabrera. Then Jemai Jones makes his first start. And Wells, yeah. who I flipped on Wells and Trevi at the moment. And I think we'll spend all season flipping on those two or welcoming a new face at one point. But um, I understand Jones hasn't started yet. Also, you just got the news that DJ's doctor said, hey, Jones might have to be part of this team. You can't just like hide him and ditch him. So like, maybe we'll give him some run. And Glaber needed a day off as bad as someone's needed a day off on the team. You know, this so much so they didn't pinch hit Glaber earlier. They did it finally at the in the 10th inning when they were at a bench. But I think that was supposed to be Glaber. Why don't you don't even put the cleats on today, Glay? Like, take the day off. Drain your head. Don't even, you know, be around mentally yeah, in a he, nice way. He, en- he ends up pinch hitting in the 10th, but that's for Trammell just because the Yanks. So I said, they didn't pinch hit him earlier in it. Yeah. When they should have, if Glaber was, like, there. I think he was really an off day. I'm not upset about it either. I think he needed it. But it's, a, it's, a, it's the worst lineup of the year. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to use them, and you're saying there's other spots. I don't know. That's a that's a little mental gymnastics. I I don't know. I I guess I'm not I'm not happy with it because it's a little bit of the old ways. Like the Yankees know that there is a seventeen. What is it? Seventeen games in seventeen days. Uh, yep. So they're kind of being precautionary on that. Where I. I don't know. Again, I the 2019 Yankees, I think it was, they were doing a lot of, hey, if we win the first two games, like we'll we'll mess around. I think that's when we really started throwing punt lineups out there. But we were okay with it. It, it led to some weird record days. Um, but I don't know. Just, I don't know. Stanton had been getting a lot of off days recently. I, I didn't love it. Oh, I don't like the Stanton, Trent Grisham stuff. Right. But I labor needed a day. So I think that's fine. He was like down and out on. He's down and out on three sides of the ball right now. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's still April. I know, but you know, I just think he looks really lost. He did an ice cream day. He didn't get it. Um. Okay, so this game, the Ferg comes in at the end, and I don't know if he's getting talked about later. Maybe. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Nestor was great. Yeah, it was supposed to be Nestor, a Nestor and Soto were good. It was supposed to be a Nestor perfect game. Um, Nestor screwed it up. Uh, he deflected one off his own glove, which would have been an easy chopper up the middle. I think that would have been three perfect. Um, and, you know, special days at the stadium, like when you're watching the Yes Network in the offseason, and you're like, wait, what game is this? Oh, they're honoring Stern. Oh, yeah, Nestor. Um, so Nestor screwed that up. And then the Trent Grisham assist was on the next play. So, Nestor looked gross, though. Yeah. Trent Grisham gets credit because he threw the ball. That was maybe the worst base running. It was suicidal base running. Base running around the league, Jim. It is. The Rays were really bad last year, too, at base running. Yeah. I mean, they're not good at it, but I think. Yeah. What teams around baseball are good at base running? Like, the Diamondbacks have points from last year. They put on a show in the playoffs. Like I'm trying to think know. of other teams that jump out. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there are. I'd ask you. I haven't watched a lot around the league. They don't teach it. They should teach it. They should. They should. I feel like the Rangers and the Orioles were good at base running last year. Their starters were. Orioles are aggressive, young. Yeah. Uh huh. I think the Red Sox are bad. Damn. I think. I don't Shrapnel. know. Shrap Vegas. All right. Game game was all right, but stunk ultimately. Stunk. Big stunk. Yeah, Judge goes over for 4 with 4Ks, so that's the big storyline takeaway. Probably get to it at some point. Lost. Yeah. Game number three, the rubber match. Good pod, bad pod, fun day, great day, Sunday in the Bronx. Yanks would hope to break out of their offensive slump with Aaron the Civ Alley for Tampa, and hopefully Luis's wildness is cured as time heals all wounds. Bottom one, Tony rises up an RBI single. It's 1-0 Yanks in the fifth. Caballero horses around 
and gets healed to balk. We're tied up at once. And that was all Luis would give up. 5.2 innings pitch, two hits, three walks, nine Ks. Could the Yankees offense wake up in the fifth? Manager Kevin Cash gives Savali a little too much leash as he walks too many of the dogs and then gets yanked. Double entendre. Alex Verdago, two RBI single. Jose Trev Doggo, RBI single. Os Doggo Cub Doggo, RBI single. It's five to one Yanks. They would cruise it. Eh? Oh no. Santana gets knocked around for three. It's five to four. Gonzo off his beak, flips it to Rizzo. Yankees win 5 4, and they take the series two out of three. Wandy Peralta, he's still with us. He just, the spirit of Wandy came through Gonzo there. It was a nice play by him. Um, in this game, I really liked the inning that they got their runs. Very patient with the sieve. He would try to go, it was two outs. He tried to go low to Stanton. Every pitch was a curve or slider below the zone or cutter or splitter, whatever his pitches do with movement. And Stan just didn't bite at all. Was kind of bored about it. Went to first base. Then another walk by Rizzo. And then another walk by Glaber. And they're on the ropes. And they're seeing all these pitches. Want to know what happened on the next three pitches, Jake? Was that, like three straight hits? Swing, swing, swing. Mm. Oh, oh, first we'll bore you to death with our patience, and then we'll swing, because now you're going to be in the zone. Not going to make that mistake again. That was nice, though. They all just jumped it, put it in play, got the job done. I liked that inning. Yeah, a little shout-out to the Rays pen, which a little surprise has been, like, the worst pen in baseball, because, uh, yeah, Cash lets them walk three straight. Uh, I don't know. That's uh, it's a tough look in hindsight that that turns into a five spot, but we'll take that. We will. Yeah, I man. believe they only scored runs in two innings this entire series. Yeah, there's some. Um, well, let's see. They scored two innings today. Um, oh, they got the one early. I forgot about that. Yeah, and then they, they, yeah. So three innings, and I, I think if you go back to Toronto, you can make those numbers look even, even more cray. All right, I'm not gonna do it. He's not gonna do it. People I believe you been. wholeheartedly. People have been plain white tea. John Boy Media shop. John Boy Media ah, com. Jam. Nice. Jam. Well, did you see your pose? Jam. Come on. The way you were posed on the back. Up. Come on. It was cool. Um, I was looking to compliment you. Plain white tea is cool. It's not me, though. You know that. Not you. Company man. Santana comes in. They got no bullpen. Like, they got no bullpen. Yeah, I mean, they... um... I don't know if that's an award or, like, a talking point in the second half of the show. But, like, they got... No bullpen. I would watch game two with my dad, and he was like, who's the seventh inning guy these days? I'm like, dad, everybody's everything, and that's not being said in a positive way. Just everybody's used when they're ready. I think I I li- I truly have faith that they can turn guys into studs, but I still think, like, you need to, okay, yeah, we turned you into a stud. Okay, take the sixth inning for half a season. Right. Okay, now we'll bump you up. Like, even Clay got a decent stretch there before, like, you know, he was the closer, single closer, dude. And, um, you know, so you look at Hamilton, you're like, okay, good. Like, you got nasty stuff. Boom, now you're eighth inning guy because Lowe and Canely are hurt. Ugh, that's tight. Uh, and then, like, Birdie and some of these other guys, they haven't pitched a full year in forever, so you can't expect them to have the stamina, to have the health, like, so I believe you can turn guys into studs, but we're we're slim. Yeah, I, I think they have a bullpen plan that's two halves of the season. They they're gonna roll with this and see how far it can get them. And currently they're gonna point to the fifteen and seven record and say, Hey, that's it. But yeah, it's a little bit of clay in the question marks right now. Like there should be 
There should be two of those guys in the bullpen that we look at and we're like, ooh, Matt Blake, masterclass projects. But right now it's it's the whole pen. I mean, I, I think it's funny now that we've gotten to this point. You know, Booney hit us over the head at our live event and every time we've talked so far, you know, you guys, Hamilton. Like, you guys, and it's like, well, Hamilton did it for a chunk of last year and looked nice, but he's also been missing from baseball more often in the past four years than yeah. pitching, never mind pitching at a high level. So, yeah, I mean, in a way, <laughs> it it makes Boone's decision-making easier because it's like, all right, well, Gonzo, you're rested. Here's the ninth inning. Uh, go figure it out. But, yeah, Caleb currently getting the short straw, and I don't know. There's just no one you're going to confidently out there. Yeah. Except Clay. Credit to Clay. Clay's been good. He has been. He's been, like, actually nasty the last couple outings as well. You also, the bullpen combined with the can't hold a runner at all, which we'll talk about, and then combined with the can't really, like, aren't the best defensively or, like, bound to make some sloppiness, it's a really tough close game formula. <laughs> One of the toughest. And I had this realization today that I don't think they're going to go trade for anyone. I think okay. they're going to look at Birdie, Efros, Canely, Trevino as their trades. And I don't know how well I think that plan will work pan out. Speaking of pan, pattern, goal, go Rangers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, as we keep an update on the groundskeeping and those timelines. Um, yeah, I mean, they definitely, Canely and Trevino, they definitely have part of the bullpens coming up. The Efros updates have been bad. Um, but I don't know. I, cash will work the phones. I, I don't think they'll, they're not going to overextend themselves. Yeah. No one like, it would be another attempt at a three-year deal like Clay and Wandy and yeah. Ferg. I expect them to at least do one of those Fergs, also one. But Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say maybe it would be a lefty because, you know, between Gonzo and Ferg, I, I don't think either of them have looked... Super high leverage, although Gonzo's starting to put together a nice start to the to season that. officially. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say handedness matters, but, I mean, Canely can also be kind of a lefty killer. So, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think they'll be on the horn, and you could see a, a May-June one, but I, I think there's, like, Yankees bullpen pre-trade deadline and Yankees bullpen post-deadline. I, I think... I think we will have a funny screenshot at one point. You got one right now for sure. And the, I mean, what the second part? What their like yeah. marketable skill has been has been like within season building bullpens. So it's like it, I'll, I'll give them a chance to do it, but I'd love something soon. Well, no, I, right I also, now is not fun. I also hope part of it is that they they've burnt out bullpens. That this is part of their you know smart guy strategy is like, hey, we'll burn out some guys at the start of the season who aren't a part of the end-of-the-year formula. That's pretty funny. Kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, I don't think they're doing that. I think they think all these dudes are studs. Or, or they do. Will be. They for sure do. I think, I think they're there. Ron, they hate Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> if mean to Ron. <laughs> Ron's better than Ferguson. All right, we're doing a fantasy camp. Ron... Yeah, that's unbelievable. He did I mean, fantasy he, camp. Even when Ron's been rolling, they disrespect him sometimes. <laughs> like, what was it, 18 straight innings? Sent him down like a week later? Yeah. Oh. Numbers. Handsome. Cody Morris time. C-O-M-O. Go Mo. Go. Go. Awards. Awards. Second half of the show is where we give out some awards, and it is brought to you by... Tommy John, Jim. Tommy John. Tommy John. Hey, I'll start with this. Comfortable underwear. I'm wearing them right now. For those watching on the YouTube, you will see them at the end of the read. Uh, and Tommy John, now with their second skin underwear, uh, it can make or break your day. If you're putting the wrong stuff on there, you got the old the raggedy stuff with holes in them, bad texture, you're just setting yourself back. 
It's a bad start to the day. And that's why you need to go with Tommy John. I made the full switch. All of my underoos are Tommy John now. Don't have to think in the morning. It's the best I've ever felt on my biscuits. Quote that. And right now you get 20% off with your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Yanks. 20% on second skin at TommyJohn.com slash Yanks. Click the link in the description. Um, Tommy John says we have fanatics, and I'm one of them. And you could become one of them too. Here are my underwear on YouTube. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Well, first award we give out here on Talking Yanks is Pride of the Yankees. Pride of the Yankees. Pride of the Yankees. Of the Yankees. Yeah. And it's an odd pride for me, actually, because there's there's a good amount of options. There's one I would really like to give it to. Um and I usually don't give a pride of the Yankees to a guy who performed in the one loss of the three games. But my, I look back at this, this weekend of ball and I see which name am I the most proud of for how they performed over the course of the last three days. One guy stands out way taller than the rest. It's Nestor Cortez jr. Okay. Uh, because I was, I kept saying that Marlins series, that Marlins game, and you you heard Nelson say this on the broadcast as well. Like, yeah, that was great, but they're the Marlins, man. They're real bad. They're one in seven versus lefties, like Jake said. Like they stink. One in ten. One in ten, like Jake said. He looked even better versus this Rays team. Uh, he looked really polished. He was hitting his spots with ease, which is like what he actually does really well when he's pitching uh, well. So I'm going to go Nestor, even though he pitched in losing effort. Not his fault. Yeah. 102 pitches thrown, 9 Ks, 0 walks. Very important because we need pitchers to go 7 innings more. So let's cut the walks out, everyone else. Uh, 6 hits, 0 earned runs. Bend didn't break a lot of innings. Always got out of it. His play where he fielded the bunt and threw it to first. I know Rizzo had the better half of that play the catch and positioning, but Nestor, it looked like he thought for one second, like, should I? And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. And fired it. It was nice. Bang. Bang. So I'm going Nestor. Give us a little Laredo, Jim. Mm. Okay. But <laughs> what What did you mean? I was thinking verbally. You, you like letting one of those eat. Laredo? That's Coney. I don't think I say that often. Wow, that's I. Whenever you're talking about Nestor, and if he doesn't do it, you're normally bummed out about it. But he he busted out a couple. Uh, uh, lo- the going sidearm, yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, which you know that's that's one of our monitors if Nestor's feeling good or not. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested to look back uh, later on in the series because you know Clark has seven punch outs. Um, Hill with heel with nine himself, uh, and this Rays lineup is, is <laughs> it's a Rays lineup for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, but the seven innings, Clark and Clark and Heel still can't make it out of the six. Absolutely, uh, and that's where you know Nestor's experience and Nestor's a veteran on this team. Uh, and when you're right, like you said, he pounds the strike zone. So uh, that was good to see from Nestor. I thought his sweeper was moving a lot more than normal. Uh, I think yeah, he had a couple on that freezing him on the outside. Second the or third that time really through, nice. he started busting that out. The whole Rays lineup was right-handed, so it was a. Uh, it was a righty matchup. Uh, the changeup was there, and then he kind of lost it. That was uh, the broadcast was excited because that was kind of his best pitch from his last time out. Uh, but yeah, it looked kind of more traditional Nestor that just pounding the strike zone with fastballs, cutters, uh, and then that sweeper late was like fun. It was it was like yeah. wiffle ball-y late. Um, good start by him. I agree. I was proud of it. Good, good. Uh, in the L. Good for you, Nestor. Um, I will go with one of the other pitchers, Jim. And I'm going to go with Luis Heal. Uh, Jim, it's Sunday. This was a sneaky, I don't want to say big game for the Yankees, but we lost a series to Toronto, division opponent. 
We come home. We face Tampa. In Toronto, we played an ugly brand of baseball, like snuck out a win on the final game against the back end of their used bullpen. And we kind of gave like golf claps for that. We're like, hey, that's a sign of a good team, man. Like they, they looked bad for three whole baseball games, but they salvaged it. Then they kind of came in and they looked bad again for two games, if we're being honest. Like that, that one inning, uh, if the ball doesn't go off that rock, I, I don't know how the first game goes. They get shut down in the second game. Luis Hill comes out. The last time we saw him was some of the toughest Yankee ball to watch in a long time. Uh, the, the fastball was just all over the place, so I kind of had a moment before the game where I was like, ooh, this will be interesting for young Luis Hill to see just how he's reacting. And at first I got nervous. First hitter of the game, he throws a two-strike changeup that doesn't get called. It was a borderline pitch. Uh, and he starts doing, he gets a little theatrical, and I was like, hey, hey, Luis, we can't. We just talked about this. We just did this. Um, And then uh, the control was never a problem. Uh, You know, he ends up having three walks, and one of those was announcer Jinxie uh, as as Kay got on himself. But he was dominant in this game. I mean, he gets tricked by Caballero, which, again, I almost, part of me likes that now, knowing the result. Like, hey, Luis Heal, like, keep accumulating these baseball life lessons. Um because I can't have that happen in a more important game. But he was pretty dominant today, and every time... And then later in the game, every time there was a frustrating moment, uh, he'd settle in and he'd throw the strike he needed and uh, get the strikeout, usually. Yeah, he threw the fastball less than the last time because he didn't throw the slider at all, really, or the changeup against the Blue Jays because he was just trying to find the fastball. He went from 68% of the time to 58% of the time. And according to Baseball Savant, which I didn't notice or hear them talk about, but I also did my audio on the whole game, he threw cutters today? Uh, I don't know. First time ever? Says he threw three cutters, but I don't know. What... Yeah, that could be that could be a correction tomorrow. I, I don't I don't think they said or noticed anything on that. Me neither, but sometimes that's tough to tell. I can look into it. Uh, so good job by Luis Hill. I agree. No walks. I still, I mean, three walks still hurts him. Like, we still need to get deeper. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of learning lessons. He's 25 and was just out of baseball for, like, two years. Um, I don't know. The, the stuff is elite, and it'll be interesting to see his learning curve as he goes and... I don't know, eventually how the Yankees treat him and his innings this season. The innings is interesting. Be a nice bullpen guy, huh? Yeah, when Cole comes back, who gets bumped? Because it should not be him. Or it should. Yeah, I mean, when, when you're doing big picture, it's probably him. Yeah. For this year, you know, it... After Still some time to go. This ex- yeah. It could be him. I take it back. Man, I wish he had been ill. Rotation's been, like, good, but not good. Mm. Probably started the Yanks this year since the first road trip and home, home stand. They've been, unfortunately, kind of modern baseball. Not a lot of innings, but... Pretty decent it'd, performance. It'd be, it'd be cool if one more guy every turn through the rotation would drop a seven, but I don't care who it is. But and right, I'm got I'm looking at his cutter now. Apparently, the three two pitch he threw to Isak in the top of the sixth inning was an oh yeah was an 89 mile per hour cutter. He just spiked it into the ground. I mean, does it look like his slider? His slider normally is 87, 88. Maybe. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know why it would randomly read. Here's one that 91, they say this is a cutter. I'll see if it looks like a cutter or slider. Mm, I think that's a cutter. Okay. Interested. It's a pitch that they're all trying to learn. It's interesting spots that he's throwing it, but it is, they're up, up and in. That one was, which is where Blake's been teaching all of them to use the cutter. Hmm. Clark likes doing that. So, interesting. Okay. Two pitchers with the prides. How about it? Well, 
I mean, if we're being honest, <laughs> the offense, yeah. Stinks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to go MF her. Why don't you? You Yankee motherfucker. Sorry. I think I just heard a big fall happen upstairs and then a big cry. Okay. Um, Katie's got him. Trevino, I got to go or the catchers if you allow me to combo them because I just need to talk about it. It's my biggest pain point of the season right uh, now. So, like, it is the mf -er, but it can be both of them or it can be none of them or it can be Trevino if I had to ISO someone. Uh, yeah, it's tough because Trevi... Trevi's offensive numbers look fine, but it's a defensive thing you want to talk about. Uh, just cook with it. We'll see where it lands. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out the books on it later. But just All right. Well, the Yankees have had 27 stolen base attempts in 22 games now. And they can't throw anyone out. So if you look at baseball reference, I learned this. Uh, they give the catcher of record credit for the caught stealing, even if the pitcher stepped off and threw the ball. The Yankees have three or four of those. Uh, Corbin Carroll in Arizona. Uh, one of the Guardians, uh, Naylor did it in the Guardians, and Rod Rodon's gotten two, Nestor's gotten one. I think Clark has one. I mean, they have four. They just step off and get the runner. So if you look at the baseball reference stats, it looks like the Yankees are above average at throwing runners out. They're not. Wells hasn't thrown out anyone. And Trevino has only thrown out one base runner where it was like an actual steal attempt. His other two are a double steal where he threw it to second, got the trail runner who stopped running and tried to like go backwards to bait the tag. So the runner at third now might steal. And the other was an ending, ending, inning, ending, strike him out, throw him out, double play where Justin Turner was running thinking it was a hit and run and they swung through the hit and run. So Turner doesn't even really finish his run. He just kind of gives up and gets out because he was dead. So one, one base runner has been thrown out. And then you want to go deeper into the, like the numbers. They have very, very bad arm strength and pop times. Trevino right now ranks as the worst, worst arm speed as of catcher throwing down a second in baseball. And Wells is slightly above average. And then pop time, they're both below average. So it's an issue. You're, we are going to see this, and the pitchers are going to have to step off. They're going to have to use a lot of their throws, do whatever they can, because the the Trevino's arm is noticeably not strong. Yes. Yes. I mean, the, the throws are like 70 miles per hour on the nose, which, um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, some some of the elite catchers can hit, you know, mid mid-80s. High 80s on a throw. Uh, but pop time's what it's all about. And they're coming in. I, I was a little surprised. It, it was, you know, it's below average. It, it's felt worse. Um, that, yeah, I I don't know. I, I don't know what the solution is. Um, like you said, with, with the pitchers trying to hold the runners and control the running game, in a way, for those ones you referenced, they, they do deserve some credit, or the pitchers do, because um, we also had Luis Heald today who had one of those with Caballero, but he threw it into center field. Uh, so it's definitely known uh, within the Yankee team, and yeah, it's just matchup to matchup. It's going to be interesting because it, it feels like runners on first are turning into doubles pretty quickly, and then... You're losing double play opportunities. You're putting runners in scoring position. That it's, it's just a really bad formula. Yeah, teams are going to do this if they if they you know once this gets around, it seems the Rays they still, they run everyone. But how many did they have this series? They had they had two today. Five in the first game. Let's see how many two today. How many in the second game? Uh, two in the second game. So nine stolen bases in three games. Yeah, that's a lot. It is a lot. There should be a little bit of a raise asterisk, um, because that's you know 
their whole lineup in that first game, we mentioned the 13 hits and only two of them for extra bases. So not a lot of teams are built like the Rays, but it's currently currently one of the Yankees' big weaknesses. Yeah, and it's just like I'm giving it an MF because it's visibly, it's like physically hurting me every time I watch it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's that's not it. Yeah. Our group chat has had something about it said every game by somebody. Just some of the throws... You know, we we like to give, you know, these are professional baseball players. We are not. You like to give the benefit of the doubt a lot. And, you know, Trevino had a couple throws earlier in the year that you're like, I don't, okay, maybe, maybe caught it on the seams wrong or whatever, but he's consistently throwing it down a second, like 70 miles per hour in the nose, and some of them, some of them feel uncompetitive. Yeah. At least we're not the Mets. They've allowed 28 stolen bases and have thrown out zero base runners. Boom. And Alvarez just got hurt. Yeah, so maybe that That's helps. Sad. Maybe that brings in a guy with an arm. Playing Oakland next. They are 25th in steals. So, Well, the Rays, if you're wondering, could Rortvet have done this? No. They've been getting run on like crazy as well. Second worst in Major League Baseball. Rortvet was kind of just Trevi. Like skill set, like they they like them both because they can frame pitches, not because they're expert at blocking or throwing or hitting. I think Rupert has a strong arm. Physically, yeah. Pure arm did, did you hear about strength. Randy Rosarena? Right, too beefy. Start, he's too muscular now. That's why they ran Ben and Tendy out of Boston. I hear that? Cora has a whole article about how he said, "Why did you? Why did you show up muscular? Yeah. You're not going to be fast anymore." I believe in it. Oh, definitely. It's why hockey players don't really work out their upper body to get bulky. They want to be lanky, so they're faster with their shot. Well, flexibility. Damn muscle heads. That's why I didn't want Volpe showing up all jacked, because I, I knew when Pena showed up jacked for the Astros in his second year, I was like, uh-uh, that ain't good. Ain't good. Not at that position. All right. You have to fuck someone. So how do we label that? I labeled it in our books as Trevino. Um, okay. He's a, of the two of them. He's the one that's supposed to be a good defender and the, the platinum glove year. He was good at throwing guys out. Okay. I looked into that. He could throw without the pitch clock. He was better. His pop time and his arm strength wasn't any better two years ago. It was all the same. I, looked at the game log of his throws down a second in 2022. And it was all still like 70 to 74 miles per hour. Like it wasn't the pure strength on the yeah. throw was no different. It had to be something different about getting jumps, you know, and Trevi knows he doesn't have a great arm. He back picks to first more than any other catcher. Yeah, and it's, you know, end, end of the day, it is about pop time. And, I you know, MLB average pop time is usually around two flat. And their, you know, their times are coming in 205, I think some 2.1. So, I don't know, maybe there's some footwork and stuff that can get cleaned up um, and get I wonder if pop there. time is getting faster because I keep tracking it and there's a lot that are under two. Yeah, I looked at Savant yesterday. I uh, I don't know. Two was I was surprised two was as middle of the pack as it was because I was I don't know even even in high school baseball you hear rumors like this high school kid's got a one seven um, yeah but that's yeah. a known like joke in yeah the base worlds that catchers just all the high school all the high school pop times are wrong like I post about pop time now so I get that a lot they're like okay so everyone at those AAU uh, skill sessions you know that you can coach seeing line this? right <laughs> seeing this um. So, I don't know. Maybe it can be partially correctable. Best pop time, Gabby Moreno. 176. Special. Special defender. Yeah. Um, My MF-er. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Ugh. Golly. Not Jemai Jones. That's just. That's not. I think how, there's a guy. I think there's a guy. Who do you think? 
I'd go judgy. Um, he hasn't gotten one yet. Neither of them have gotten one yet. They'd be kind of. I think it's fair game. Yeah, it's funny. I I mean Volpe. I I kind of blame the coaches on. Um, I we said it when he got slid up. His numbers in the leadoff spot are awful. He's swinging out of the zone. He was gonna come down anyways. Um, so I almost don't blame him. Uh, Judge. Yeah, I, I'll give Judge the MFR. Um, yeah, because Stanton was kind of up there too. But again, I'm I'm kind of more mad at the coaches. <laughs> Pinch hit Stanton just doesn't work. Uh, I'll go Judgey. Something's clearly off. I mean, the Rays were literally spamming the outside slider like it was a bad video game in like the 2000s. Uh, and yeah, it was just kind of bizarre. Kind of bizarre. Uh, to see Judgey look like that, that had us spinning about injury. And they talked about that on the broadcast a little bit, and uh, Mayor kind of poo-pooed that one and was like, you know, for Judge had that big dive in center field, that that uh, that bloop ball, his hidden ball trick, um, that to still be running him out there. I don't know. There was the mid-spring beat up, and who knows what he's actually feeling uh, for me, and again, everyone's just guessing, and hey, maybe it's baseball on April 21st, and he just needs to run into one. Um, I don't know. He looks a little far from the plate. I, again, that's pretty... I don't know if that's James Rousen level analysis, but I, I feel hmm. like Judge used to... He was covering that outside corner. There was the one offseason he went in. That was the one big thing he had to work on, sliders away, and he was either taking them... Or if they were in the zone, he was driving them. Now it feels like uh, that outside slider, he kind of has no idea what's going on. Uh, and I I saw him, the where I first started to theorize this, uh, he swung at a fastball that was pretty inside. And it, it, it wasn't judgy in. Like, that's, that's not a ball judge goes after. And then I was like, is, is judge just kind of not sure where the plate is right now? Um, but the fact that someone like me is now questioning it, uh, means judge got to a weird level. Cause I was also always impressed, you know, the up and in fastball judge was able to get his hands in and somehow get the barrel on it. And I was always so impressed by that, that, yeah, I'm interested to see what the next steps are that I, I think we can look back in a couple weeks, judge will be going nuts and we say, Hey, there's Aaron judge, but yeah, definitely entered a weird territory fans like aren't familiar with, with the big guy. Yeah, I think he would have given himself MF or he said the famous quote that everyone says, I'd boo me too. He um I think it's just a timing thing. I was taking videos of and I posted it. His foot today, he was just kind of twitching, like trying to make sure he get his foot up and then down faster. And I don't know if that's normal or not normal, but traditionally he's pretty still, like very still in his feet, like quiet in the box for such a big dude. And then the pitch comes in, he just raises, lowers, swings. But he was kind of like, as the pitcher was winding up, like shaking his foot. Um, but yeah, the it led to strikeouts for the first time. Because up, up until like halfway through the Blue Jays series, I still think he wasn't strike, his strike to walk ratio was awesome. But then it led to strikeouts. That was bad. And I think he switched bats. I think we went like a different bat in between games. So he's searching for something. I tweeted it out. I'll reiterate. I'm not really worried about judge likelihood that he returns the form is way higher than him having like a season year slump. Uh, unless it is injury, then that's worrisome. Right. But if it's just form, I, the dude will call teacher man 98. They'll have a private session uh, in some batting cage somewhere and he'll come back and he'll mash. Yeah, I mean, I also, you know, I, we, we send some shrapnel around this show sometimes. I, I think uh, with the lineup being thin after Judge slash including Judge right now, I think pitchers are getting gross on Judge a little bit. I, I mean, the spamming, the slider hit a point of like, ooh, like that's that's crazy. Like almost why would you throw another pitch to Judge? And then first at bat of the game, that backdoor 3-2 fastball, uh, by Savali was actually gross, and that kind of that's going to ruin a hitter's whole day when they're struggling with the outside slider. Um, but yeah, I, I think pitchers are with the rest of the Yankees lineup right now. 
and Judge not having his A game, it's allowing them to kind of be gross on Judge and feel confident about it. He said that too when he talked to Meredith. He was like, I'm not getting many pitches yeah. in the plate. And when I'm getting them, I'm not I'm not hitting them. He had a shitty slider dead center today. That was just not he did not do anything with. That was a bummer. Trying to see, I'm looking at video from 2022. So right now, just compare his like where he's standing. Just grab like two shots of him at Yankee Stadium. And tough to really tell. He does look more open. He's more open for sure. Okay. Because before his knees come together, like there's no gap in the from the angle. We can see in between his legs. Like kneecaps touch and this one is open. So other than that, I think it's the same. Might be further from the plate. Stands pretty far from the plate both years. Kind of crazy. That was the big change he made in 2022 was moving off the plate to invite the slider. Right. But he could cover it. And right now he's not. Yeah. He's not covering it. Yep. That's a big issue. It could be timing. Nelson said that. Like it no. Free game. Dan. Dave. Blanking. Our friend. Valley. Hey. He said. He said it. He had a good he did a whole breakdown. It was good. Saying, gotta get that foot down faster. Because then the whole pitch slows down and you can recognize it better. Like That's that. serious from Judge, though. Center field, hidden ball trick. It's like you. That was like similar to the play we always talk about of you in high school. Yeah, it wasn't oh, straight catch. ahead, but. It wasn't straight ahead, but yeah. It was more towards second baseman. Mine was very much a comedy show. His was, that's a huge body. And he could just buried it. I kind of I haven't seen that really. It's a good play. Not a lot of center fielders that size. No, Michael Morris ever play center field? Uh, I can check. I can check. I'm gonna okay. guess he got an inning out there. He was athletic. I'd guess it as well. All right. Well, that brings us to the next portion of this program. Hmm. Regular old awards. Mike Morse never played center field. Ooh. Got some shortstop time though. Yeah. That was that was awesome. Those huge fantasy implications. Good deal. Um man, regular mm. awards. awards. Talking about more people. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go with the um, – I'm going to go with the – Yes. I have it in my head. I know what it is. Seeing it, um, feeling it. Getting ready for bandwagon blue shirts. Slappy award. Slappy. Slappy. Slappy award, huh? Yes. Uh, it goes to Anthony Rizzo. No, wrong. Wrong. Goes to Verdugo. He, okay. Dude, he just slaps the ball. Uh, I really like how he hits. He, he hits balls. He's hit two balls now. One in the Blue Jays series, one in the series where he puts it over the second baseman's head, like dunks it. And he's got one hand on the bat at the time of contact. Like, literally just throwing the barrel at the ball to slap it in play. Is one down the line today, a three-hit day today. Um, he's been going of late, which is nice. You know, I think the season has been a winning season. We continue to win series because there's at least one person plus Soto to be doing something in each game. Soto and then Oswaldo. Soto and then Verdugo. A lot of times it's the lefties because that means the pitchers are um, not getting the lefties out. Yeah, I mean, I Verdugo came across for pride a little bit, but it was most <laughs> sounds dumb. It was mostly statistics. Um, although he he was moving in left field today, 
Um, and yeah, I mean, with the current state of the Yankees lineup, he's one of the few guys that when he's up in a big spot, you're like, okay, this, yep. this could go. And yeah, it's funny you, you gave out the slappy award because uh, the one ball he actually pissed on ended up in the deep part of right field, and Randy caught it. Uh, he he stuck it for a second, and everyone was like, "Ooh, Doogie!" <laughs> um, and then it got caught up in the warning track right at the 385 sign. Um, Who flew out to deep left? Was that yesterday? Was it Trevi again, or was it Judge? Uh, Soto had one on the warning. Soto, yeah. Soto had one. Soto that was, sneezed that was Soto. one. Yeah, that was pretty. That was shocking. That got pretty out there. Deep part of the stadium too. Yeah, that ball kept going. Um, great Be- award. Believe after today's, he went three for four today. Uh, I believe after that, since the start of the Marlins series, last 12 games, batting 357 batting average. So, okay. One, go, over a one dot. Way to go, Doggy. So you've been doing it. I Your first award? I am giving out the ping pong award. Ping pong. Ping pong. Over and just turn it over. Return playing against the wall. Rizzo. I see why you went there. Uh, it's going to Oswaldo Cabrera. Uh, we, nice. We've talked a lot about infield defense uh, on this program, as there are some concerns tied to that. And when you tie that to a contact bullpen, it's a recipe. You can't throw out the runners. Hello. Um, Oswaldo Cabrera's been our third baseman. How about that? April 21st. Um, and was it the first game of this this series that was every ball was just out of play? Or was that the last game of last series? Oh, I think it was the first I game of this, this series, series, right? Uh, every ball was just like out of reach for him. Yeah, that, they were like in a shift or, bunt, or like a swinging bunt. I like Oswaldo. He is one, he's a genuine nice person, like a, <laughs> like a ray of light. Like if you're having a dark day, people like Oswaldo, you're like, damn, dude. Um, that's pretty cool uh, that we met Oswaldo. He wore the necklace. He, you know, one Yankee fans over with his personality. And then the baseball was tough for a little bit there. So Oswaldo comes back. He gets a hot start with the stick. Okay, okay. Um, defensively. I don't know. There have been a couple in between plays. I, I know he, he had some errors. And I was kind of wondering, where did I stand on Oswaldo at third? Um, and then the first game of the series happened, and you know I love third base defense. And I was like, man, I can't tell how much my Oswaldo blinders are on. Like, were any of these makeable? I think there was one that I, I thought he could have had a better effort on, but they were all really tough plays, and I, I felt good about that. The rest of the series, he played a really good third base. Uh, he had a couple testers. Uh, Nelly was good on the call today. There was one that was between do you bare hand or do you use the glove went with the glove made the nice play him like Volpe it seems like he's had a couple plays where he's had trouble with the the transfer um and every time he he had that in the final two games of this series uh he played a really good third base so uh you know ping pong you gotta test your hands Jim that's all it is that's how it came into play yeah gotta test your hands uh, as well, those hands got tested the next two games, and he he passed the test. I'm gonna sanction you soon for just unguessable clues. I mean, slappy for slapping the ball as as guessable as it gets. Yeah, that's what everyone does. No, he really just throws the barrel at it. Okay, what other um, infielders use their hands well? Well, how am I supposed to know ping pong is about testing your hands? Play ping pong once, dude. You're sanctioned. Uh, uh, he also had that play, same play where he got the um, missed the tag at third when Glaber threw it over. That was the the uh, Trent Grisham, I believe, outfield assist. He had to position himself to catch it, not block third, and lean over and get the tag. And he did it this time a little better. It was still clunky, but got the result. So good job. Where are you going with your second award? My second award, um, I'm going to go to – I'm going to give out the – I 
flip. No, that's very similar to ping pong award. Hmm. The changing places award. Okay. The changing places award. Um, I am going to give that to, well, I think you've got two options for this award and I think you're just going to change it, but I'll go Anthony Volpe. What's the, I'm going to change it. I got stats backed up. Trading places. Is that the show or is it, did I say changing places? Trading. You said changing. What's the show? Trading places. Trading places is the movie. Okay. That's what I meant. Okay. I don't know if that changes anything for you. I already guessed. There's a show called Trading Spaces. Could be that too. We could go with that one. Is that on TLC? What's that on? It goes to Soto. S O T O Soto. Soto. I had this uh, written in my notes app. Okay. And then they started talking about it on the game broadcast uh, at length. And then I went to our Google Doc where we store questions that we come up with for Boone over the course of the series, and you had already typed in, or maybe it was BBD. I don't know. I so it seemed like three people or all of us were thinking it, and now a lot of people because broadcast. Soto, would you like to trade places with Aaron Judge? Because you have the most walks <clears throat> to start a game in Major League Baseball, and you're seeing the ball well, and you're hitting the ball well, and Judgey's not getting many over the plate right now. And would you be interested in trading places to the three hole and Judge moves up to the two? I would be interested in it. Okay. If Soto has no qualms, he's like, yeah, sure. I don't care. Um, I think I want to ask Boone about it. It changed the course of Roger Maris's home run breaking season. And they waited until like May. I put that in the notes to ask. Protection's real. We all know it right now. Judge has none, really. And if he can see more fastballs in the zone, I think he could have some fun and just jumpstart him. I don't think, like, you could switch back afterwards. But if we're just saying Judge just needs to get jump started, I think that's how you do it. I'd go ask Soto. I'd say, Soto, are you cool with it? Because you're, you're, you look great. So if I gave you the lineup card, what's it look like? Volpe, Judge, Soto... Stanton Rizzo. Okay. Do you mess around with Doogie at all? Nope. I think his approach is perfect at 6-7. So you're okay with Volpe just eating it and lead off for a little bit? Yeah, they have no other options now that they've done it. At this point. Well, Verdugo would be the other option. He led off for the Red Sox. He's swinging a good bat right now. Yeah, you could put Verdugo there. Verdugo, okay. Judge, Rizzo. If that gets Volpe back down to 6 7. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Okay. I wouldn't mind it. I thought you were talking about putting Verdugo up to like the 4 5, which I don't like. But yeah, I didn't think lead off. But yes, I would. That's what I would do then. Okay. And I, it doesn't have to be the rest of the season, but like. Hey, Judge didn't get a lot of spring training at bats. He's not getting a lot of pitches to hit right now, and he's struggling with the ones he is. So this might help. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing Guessing uh, with Oakland coming to town, I think they're going to treat that as like they're ideally a get-right series, hopefully for Volpe and Judge. Um, but yeah, if things... And I, I hope that doesn't end up being a bad thing where... Volpe and Judge play great against Oakland, and then they end up still playing tough against other opponents. But yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm open. I'm open to suggestions because it's the offense hasn't been pretty. It's been tough. It's been tough. Okay, I agree. Tough deal. Yeah. Final and last award. Final and last award that is brought to you by Bloomberg's The Deal, A-Rod. Rod! You know him. Hot corner, hot guy. And he is co-hosting The Deal with Bloomberg reporter Jason Kelly as they speak with big-time athletes, entertainers, including Maria Sharapova, Michael Strahan, Derek Cheater. 
The deal takes you behind the scenes into the world of sports, media, and entertainment and dives into the wins and losses and lessons learned along the way. You're listening to us. That means you're listening to podcasts. You're one step closer. Go listen to Bloomberg Podcasts and Bloomberg Originals. The deal on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. There's a link in the description. Check it out. Check it out now, Funk Show brother. I'm giving out the Cracked Bat Award. Cracked Bat Award goes to the Cracked Bat Award. Stanton. Jim, it's John Sterling Day. It's 420. It's Aaron Judge Bobblehead Day. Nestor's mowing people down. Anthony Rizzo comes up to the plate. 3 0 count. Let's one eat. Turns on it. Gives it what in previous years would have felt like a second deck homer swing. Lands short of the warning track. Uh, we've talked about Slappy Rizzo, asterisk next to the first award, and what was that, man? Like, we, Yankee fans moved on from that because Rizzo hasn't been a power threat in our heads for a little while. Like, that was a 3-0 fastball. Would have been a game winner if it went out. And I don't know. We all saw it happen. K went into his home run call, and then <laughs> it was... Wasn't even warning track at the stadium, which at a lot of other stadiums, it's not even like anything. What was that? This is crack bat. Hope so. I don't know. I don't know if it was really breezy that day. Um, he gives him this befuddled look a lot right now. There's a lot of shots of Rizzo kind of looking towards the gods saying, what is going on? He didn't have any weird defensive plays. He actually had some plus defensive plays, so that's great news. Yeah, That's a a series free, maybe the first one in a while. Like, no, not that I remember right now, at least, Rizzo moments on defense, so that's good. Um, He doesn't have that many extra base hits, right? No, I mean, I, I, I think, was it only two, and were they from, like, the first two series of the year? Or no, he, there was a Cleve. I think there's three, and there was a Cleveland double that if Quan had put it on the base, he would have been out. Yes, but yes, he yes, yes. And the other two are from the Houston series. So yeah, it's been um, Homer versus Toronto. That I think was Porchy. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. He just kind of looks around like, is this me now? What's how did how he's he's searching? Why did that not get out? Just a little bizarre. Yeah. Out the bat, it looked like a tailor made like only question here is fair or foul. And it was like fair by quite a bit. Fair by quite a bit? In play by quite a bit? It's almost like the first ball got sucked in and a crowd threw a ball out. That's the way the TV broadcast played that and Rizzo's reaction. Like he hit it, started walking down the line, and it was doing the classic will it stay? It's bending. Bending, will it stay fair? And then it was like caught in right field 20 feet before the wall and 40 feet left of the foul line. Hmm. Like at a lot of stadiums, that's not. I think we need people that were at game two. I don't hate the second ball theory. To let us know if they 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 clock that the entire flight. Does anyone have video of that whole ball? We might need that. Let's say flies out to Ahmed Rosario. I'm going to watch it right here. Because we all just shrugged. It was a 3-0 pitch. I don't know. 97 down the middle. Oh, my goodness. It's okay. got to be the end of the bat, or was it a cracked bat? I wonder how I can best do it. Beebs, how can I best show you stuff? Mm. Slack? Uh, yeah, send, sending a Slack. Or text, what would you rather? S- Slack, probably. Because the first frame that I just grabbed of 
everyone, the umpire, Rizzo, and the pitcher trying to see what that ball's going to do is a classic baseball picture. And this is like a foul ball or a home run. Those are the two options when you see this. Let's see, like a three okay. zero fastball that Anthony Rizzo. The pitch is right down the middle. He gives his a swing, leans back. Where that ball landed is shocking. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be in the second deck, and then you have to figure out if it went around the pole or in front of the pole. So, I don't know. There you go. There's the picture of them all looking. And then where it lands. Should I watch it from the center, the uh, different camera, just to see? I mean, oh, look wow. at... Uh, I think the pitchers react. Pitchers don't look at balls like that. Unless they're going. Yeah. Something to miss. Just something to miss about all of this. Good award. It's a nice picture. If it was like a game-winning homer. <laughs> yeah, where are you guys? Oh, I found you. Curious. All right, that ends it. Who do they play next? Oakland for four? Oakland for four. Forkland. Tomorrow's a one o'clock start. I think we're there. Yeah, we're going. Oh, we're going to that game. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Record yeah, a couple yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm going to be on MLB Network as well if you guys want to tune into that. Row Flow. No, Brian Kenny. Brian Kenny Flow. Yeah. Bri. Bri K. Brick. Old nickname. Thanks, guys. Love you. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. Go Yankees. Let's go Yankees. My grandma. Let's go Yankees. Rangers, 1 0. Capitals. Let's dead. Go so dead. <laughs> 